plan penmanship lessons, frequent and short. Remember, we're dealing with preschoolers, young learners, their attention span is very short, and so our lessons need to reflect that. Um, I, get, I, wanna, I wanna talk about an example. When my daughter was three, four, five, and six years of age, we had her in a ballet class. And the little girl, they were doing ballet and gymnastics. Yeah. And I would sit in sometimes and I would watch. And um, the expression herding cats, you know, think about trying to herd cats. You know, you get one right where you want them and then the, you know, the other five are off and going. And then you get them and then the first one's gone. Kind of watching this ballet, her name was Miss Barbara. And um, she was amazing. She was fantastic. She worked from three all the way up to 18. And um, and then she had teacher assistants that were her alum kids that had been with her. And, you know, I'd watch her and I'm like, you're not making those children listen. You know, they need to be listening to you. And I didn't say that to her. I was just thinking this in my head. As I'm watching, and she, you know, she would run the children through and she would model it and they would do it. And, you know, those little three-year-olds, you know, they're kind of like, you know, touching each other's tutus and all that stuff. And, you know, doing what little three-year-olds do. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this recital, they were practicing for the, it's gonna be a mess, you know. Now, I will tell you, I didn't observe very often. And I would go in and watch this and it was like, how are they ever going to pull this off? And then we would sit down in the auditorium. And you know what? Those little girls knew what to do. They, and sometimes a little boy, there were little boys in the ballet classes too. And they were very, very wanted. They, they were very much a part of the process. But I'm just saying those children knew what to do. And I thought about it. I thought, what an excellent example of how to teach littles. We run them through it over and over, consistent, consistent, short, gentle teaching, not a sit down and listen to me and we're gonna sit here for 30 minutes until you three-year-old know how to write your, no, 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 no. Gentle, short, consistent, fun. I talked last week about endorphins and in the brain we have hormones that are released when we're really enjoying something or um, when when our body is, when we're exercising, when we're moving, we have these endorphins that are released and we want more of that. And when we are doing things with our littles that are fun and, and loving and we're having great time and we just repeat it over and over, you know what, they learn. They actually learn. So when you're teaching, you want to have frequent, you, you may practice penmanship three, four, five times a day for about three minutes each. Hey, let's sit down, let's practice our AA. -ah -ah. When they get older, you might be able to sit there for 15 minutes and then let them run and play because by that time, a five-year-old is like, I'm done. If a five-year-old can even sit there for 15 minutes. Okay, you wanna incorporate games. Um, you can have them, when they're practicing, you can have them jumping. Uh, I'm gonna show you a phonogram. How many sounds does it have? Say the phonogram. K all right, how many sounds is that? Two, great, jump two times. Anything you can do where you're incorporating body movement. Maybe um, maybe you could have them start on one side of the room, your whiteboard's on the other side of the room, you're over there with them on, on side A, or side one, and you show them the card and you say, okay, what is this phonogram? They read it, remember we're practicing reading and writing, and they say, oh, that's kss. and I say, okay, run to the other side of the room and write that on the board. Anything you can do where they are incorporating body movement, they love it, love it, love it. So anything you do um, that incorporates body movement, anything you do that incorporates sequential instructions, that is huge important because that's language development. And if you go back um, in May when I did the SWR on preschoolers, I talked about what are the skills that your preschooler needs in order to begin the, the learning to read and write process and teaching language skills. So teaching, um, I want you to <clears throat> read the card, run to the other side of the room, write it on the board, and then somersault back. Three-step instructions. You're reading phonograms. You're writing phonograms. You have large body movement and you have um, sequential language. That's a lot of bang for your buck, and they love it, and they love it. And if you've got three or four little kiddos, then there's even more excitement because we're doing it and we're rolling together, and 
and um, it's just too much fun. You can even do that outside. You can have a whiteboard on uh, outside and have them run across grass, whatever. The point is that they are moving and anything you can do. Remember, we are practicing the phonograms by both reading and writing every day. Reading is decoding, writing is encoding. So we want both directions. All right, how fast should we introduce the phonograms? If you are working with a three-year-old, and I'm, I'm kind of, this is a generic, every child's different. You might have a three-year-old who is extremely competent and ready. I'm just doing generic here, okay? You fill in the blanks with your specific children. Do not underestimate your children, however. Okay, a three-year-old. Dabble as their interest and attention dictate. So um, I will tell you, when I started my oldest when he was uh, had just turned four, <clears throat> and I had never shown him a phonogram card. Never had shown him a phonogram card. We were coming, he had just turned four. We were coming back from a trip up to Oregon. I was sitting in the front seat of uh, our minivan as my husband was driving. My son was sitting in the car seat behind me. I was playing with his Magna Doodle. And I happened to write the letter at a A on the Magna Doodle. And he said, oh, and I wasn't writing it for him. I just was playing with his Magna Doodle. And I wrote the letter A, the at a A. And he said from the back seat, that's at a A. Yes, that is. And I erased it and I wrote kss. And he said, that's kss. And I thought, wow, wow, he knew that. And so I proceeded to go through the entire alphabet. Out of 26 letters, there were four that he did not know instantly. Four. That's it. He knew 22. Let me do my math. He knew 22 letters by phonogram sound notice by phonogram sound and I had never once shown him a phonogram card so how did we do that how did we do that well we would be sitting at the dining room table and I would have a Cheerio box on the the table and he would say what's that say and I'd say that says Ch -ch -ch. and he'd point to the the s at the end of the word and I he'd say what's that say and I'd say that's s -s -s. I would just answer his question we'd be driving around and he'd point to a building and he'd say what's that say and I would give him the phonograms. And that's all we had ever done. I had never taught him penmanship. I had never taught him. I'd never shown him a phonogram card. And the kid knew 22 of the 26 letters and he had just turned four. Now I thought he was ready to start teaching penmanship and spelling and he was, he still needed a lot of uh, teaching, but that was, that makes me a better trainer because I know now how not to do that. Um, I did not do that with my my second one, I, I did it a little bit better with him, but we practice on our first ones, don't we? Okay, so a three-year-old, we're gonna dabble as the child's interest and attention dictate. There are children who are aware of print around them and they wanna know more about it and they say, oh, my child's learning, ready to learn how to read. Well, not necessarily. It means that they're interested and next week they might not even be aware of the print around them. So you just kind of have, with three-year-old, you want to expose, you want to um, stimulate interest. Um, it's kind of like, um, this is a cup of coffee, but let's say I had hot water in here and I wanted to make some tea, okay? And I put the tea bag in and I let it sit there for about two seconds and I pull it out and I say, that's not very strong tea. How come that's not strong tea? Well, because I didn't let it steep. The tea bag has to actually sit in there for a little while, and then I can pull it out and add, I like to add cream and sugar to my tea, um, whatever, but then I have a nice flavor of, of tea. So with, with preschoolers, we need to do that. We need to let it steep. We need to be just introducing it gently and when they're interested. And, and you know, if I go outside with my sidewalk chalk and I'm showing them how to write ah, ah, and they are like, okay, whatever, maybe not to, you know, but you know what? Three days from now, when I'm doing it with big brother, little brother's going to come along and say, I want to do that. And okay, here's your chalk and you let's try it, you know, and I can go through the dialogue and, and he writes the first letter and I say, okay, let's do it again. And off he goes running. Okay. Well, you know what? I did what Miss Barber did. I introduced it and I'm just going to gently and consistently come back to that, have and, and expose him to it. And you know what? He's going to learn and it's not going to look like he's learning, but he is going to learn. Okay. So that's three. How about a four to five year old? 
it just depends on the child, uh, the interest, but when they're ready to start, when you're ready to actually get going, you want to introduce four to five phonograms a week. So maybe each day you'll introduce a new phonogram and then you'll review what you taught before. So, okay, let's practice. Let's say I'm on day four of the first week. And so day four, I would be introducing Gukje. Here's the, again, I'd start with my clock letters. So the first day I introduced that, second day, third day. Now I'm gonna introduce Gukje today, but I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start with some review. Let's practice, let's see what you remember. You know, let's start with A-A-An. Maybe they can't write it from memory yet. Maybe I'm still at the stage where I'm having to start on the baseline, go up and over, and maybe I'm still having to do that. And we'll just go very quickly and we'll review. Great, let's try D. Okay, we're gonna do the short uphill. Yeah, and, and you know, I'll go through that whole process with them. Okay, today let me show you a new one. Now that seems like you're going fast. Yes, yes, I am going fast. And at the beginning, this is really crucial. I hear this all the time. I'm working with my preschooler and it's taking forever. Okay, when you're teaching penmanship to little people, it doesn't matter if it's cursive or manuscript, it doesn't matter. Um, it takes a while at first, while they're first getting it. It's kind of like when you're building a snowman and you first try to start packing the snow together and you have to really get a good a, a good solid ball together and you you push and oh it starts falling apart and you have to you have to work and really shape a good foundation to the first the first ball that you're going to make for the base of your snowman and it takes a little while but then after a while you know what that snow decides oh i get what you, the snow snow is thinking and the snow says oh i get it what you want and so then it starts like oh okay and then you start rolling it and the snow sticks to it and and before you know it you've got the first ball and teaching penmanship is like that when you first start it feels like it takes forever because you're establishing what is the baseline. They're, they've heard it, they've said it, but now they've got to experience. Oh, that's right. It always has to come down and touch. And I will tell you, by the time you get down here to these letters, they've got it. They, they're starting, to, oh, okay, I get it. The baseline, it has to sit on the baseline. I get it. Up here, you're constantly reminding them, it's got to sit on the baseline. So at the beginning, it's going to take a while. And do not think that the amount of time it took you to teach the first three letters, multiply that, um, or two letters, how about we do that? The first two letters, the time it takes to teach the first two letters and get the child where they can actually write those, you know, a, 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 and they know how to write it. Don't multiply that by 12. That's not the time it's gonna take to teach all 26 letters. Did I do that right? 13, 13 times 20, uh, two is 36, or, or 26, sorry. I teach language arts, not math. Okay, I'm just saying it takes longer at the beginning and then they start picking up the pace. Okay, they start picking up the pace. So four or five year olds, you wanna introduce four or five a week. First grader, a six year old who's ready. All right, you're gonna introduce four or five a day. So let's go back, four or five a week for my uh, pre-K kindergarten student. That means it's gonna take me about two months. Two months, that's it. I am not gonna spend kindergarten all year teaching the alphabet, teaching how to read the phonogram cards and write. You are gonna lose them. I said last week when I talked about teaching phonograms, they have to see the phonograms in the context of words before mastery of those phonograms takes place. And so you've got to get into the spelling, you've got to get into teaching the phonograms in the context of words. So for a kindergarten, pre-K pre kindergarten student, it's gonna take about two months, that's it. Then for a first grader, it's gonna take you two, maybe three weeks. That's it. Now, they will develop mastery as you continue to practice. I'm not saying that their penmanship is perfect. I'm not, no, they're little, they're just learning. It's not gonna be perfect from the beginning. Perfection, first of all, nobody's perfect, but nice, beautiful, legible penmanship only comes with consistent practice, only. And so they have to continue practicing it. Now let's say I'm working with an older student and I want to transition to cursive. They learn manuscript, but now I need to transition. Okay, it, you're gonna basically have them on a first grade schedule. So four or five a day. Yes, use the multi-sensory. You don't necessarily have to do sidewalk chalk, although I don't know what third grader doesn't think that's fun. But obviously in a classroom that this, you know, I, I don't know, I could have done that in my classroom. I had a special ed classroom, so I could do all kinds of things that would have been very, very fun.